Hi, welcome to Blended Learning. Today we're going to learn the law of cosine and the difference between using the law of sine and the law of cosine. When we learned the law of sine last couple classes, we learned that in order to use this, we had to have an angle and we had to have the side opposite. We had to have that combination in order to break a ratio, in order to write a ratio that would make it um, so that we could solve. So then we learned that we took uh, sine of 45 degrees over 7 is equal to the sine of 120 degrees over, and then remember the side opposite of A is all the way. And we got our calculators and we used and solve. So get out your calculator. Remember and solve, you hit menu, algebra. It gives you the end solve, and then you're going to type in exactly what you saw before. I'm using my favorite button, so I'm getting my fraction key, and I'm going to say the sine of 45 degrees, and remember you have to put that degree symbol in, over 7. Now get out of the fraction, hit equals, create another fraction, then I'm going to say the sine of 120 degrees. And then I'm going to put, I usually just put X or A or whatever, but in this case we're solving for A, so I'm just going to use A. And then I'm going to hit a comma, and I'm going to tell the calculator what variable I'm solving for, which in this case is A, and I hit enter, and it gives me that 8.57. So round it to the nearest tenth. Remember, size, we round to the nearest tenth. So round it to the nearest tenth, I'm going to say it's 8.6. So I'm going to write A is equal to 8.6. That's what we did last class. Now today we're going to do the law of cosine, which means we are no longer going to have an angle and side opposite. When we're using the law of cosine, you are going to have either three sides given to you, or you're going to have a side, a side, and an angle, but the angle is not opposite either one of those sides. Now there's a lot of formulas here. Uh, but once you get used to them, then you'll see that you're just basically doing the same thing. Because of our calculators, we really don't have to worry about knowing those. We're just going to worry about these three over here. So if you would like to pause the video right now and take the time to copy those down, I'll give you a minute. Well, actually, I'm not going to give you a minute. I'm going to need to pause the video. Okay, hopefully everybody copied those down. So now let's go and do our first one. So we have this triangle, which I labeled. I'll erase it and show you how I labeled it. I'm, t I'm given that the side A is 18. So the side opposite of angle A is 8 feet. The side of the off angle B, opposite of angle B is 19. And then the side opposite of angle C is going to be 14. So when I go to do this, I'm going to, I always solve for the largest angle, which is going to be opposite the largest side. So in this case, I'm going to find look for angle B. So I'm going back to this formula that I just copied down. I'm looking for the one that has B on one side by itself. That's the formula I'm going to use. So B squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AC cosine of B. I'm going to put in my numbers that I'm missing, so I'm going to write 19 squared is equal to 8 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 8 times 14 times the cosine of B. Then I'm going to pick up my calculator and I'm going to put that into the end solve just like we did last time. So when I do that, Okay, so I'm getting out my calculator. You're getting out your calculator. I'm having technical difficulties. Oh my. Alright, so I'm going to do I'm gonna do N solve again, so I'm gonna hit menu, algebra, numerical solve. I'm going to type in exactly what I see. So I see 19 squared is equal to 8 squared 
plus 14 squared minus 2 times 8 times 14 times the cosine. And we're, remember, we're solving for angle B, so I'm going to take the time to put B in there. I'm going to get out of that parenthesis, and I'm going to put B. When I hit Enter, the calculator will solve it for me. But again, the answer is 2.03. And then I remember that I did not put this in degrees, so that means that this angle is in radians. So I'm going to hit my book, and I'm going to go down to my Ds and look for my degree decimal right there. Hit Enter. And so my answer is 116.8 degrees. We usually round it to the nearest degree, which is 117. But I want to try something. If I go back up here and grab this whole equation, and go back in here and put an angle for B, put that degree symbol in, I'm wondering, it'll give me the angle directly so I don't have to do that step of doing DD. Either way will work, but if you forget the degree symbol, don't worry, don't panic. You can either go back and grab it, or you can just change it to degrees. So we said that that angle was 117 degrees. So I'm going back to my I'm going back here and I'm going to say that angle B is 117 degrees. And I'm going to put that in my, in my picture. So this is 117 degrees. Now, if I wanted to complete the whole triangle, I can either continue with the law of cosines or I can um, use the law of sine. But in order to start using the law of sine, it's important that you find the largest angle first. If you don't find the largest angle first, you may screw it up. So um, I'm just going to go back to the law of sines now. So I'm going to say I'm going to say the sine of 117 degrees over B, which is 19, is equal to oh let's do C next. That's the next largest side. The sine of C all over 14. And so I'm going to I don't know why that keeps on showing up. It's so annoying. Um, I'm going to put that in my calculator and have it solve it for me. So, menu, numerical solve. Sign of 117. I'm going to take the time to put the degree symbol in. I have to put the degree symbol in here. I'll it's not going to calculate correctly. It's over 19. Put in my equal sign. Bring up another fraction. And now I'm going to say the sine of, I believe it was C. I'm going to put a degree symbol in there so my calculator will give it to me directly in degrees and I don't have to do that middle step. And the side opposite C was 14. I'm going to put a parenthesis or a comma in there, and then remember I have to use stick to the same letter, C and C. I hit enter, and it tells me that C is 41 degrees. So I know that angle C is 41 degrees. And if this is 41 degrees, the easiest way to find the easiest way to find what angle A is, is to take 180 degrees and subtract 117 plus 41. So 180 minus 158, and I'm going to find out that angle A is 22 degrees. Then I like to do a quick check. I like to make sure that my smallest angle, which is A, is opposite my smallest side, which it is. My largest angle, B, should be opposite my largest side, 19, which it is. So that's one example where I'm given three sides and I find all the angles. Now let's do another one. Mr. Baha, please call next Now I'm going to do one where I have two sides and I have an angle, but the angle that I have is not opposite. I'm missing this side. So I cannot use the law of sine. I have to use the law of cosine. They didn't label this triangle, so I'm going to take the time to label it just so I don't confuse with the morphine. So I'm just going to do A, B, and C. I'm still going to use one of those first formulas that I was given. And since I'm 
but missing its A, I'm going to use this formula here. They're the same formula, it's just a matter of what's missing. So I'm going to say A, I'm just going to take the time to write the formula. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. I'm going to substitute in what I know. So A is what I'm looking for. I do not have that. Uh, B is going to be 4 squared. C is 2. 2 times 4 times 2. And then the cosine of A, and A is 30 degrees. You just have to make sure that this angle is opposite of this side. That's what you have to make sure. Now on this one, I could use then solve. Then we'll Sophia, please go to room 234. Sophia, so write the actual room 234. This one, I do not have to. Um, I don't have to use nsolve because it's actually going to be faster for me not to use nsolve. If you want to use nsolve, you can use nsolve, but um, you don't have to. I'm pushing the wrong buttons here. All right, so I have my calculator out, and I'm putting in. I'm going to type in just the right side of the equation. So I'm going to say four squared plus two squared minus two times 4 times 2 times the cosine cosine of 30 and I have to make sure that I put my degree symbol in there. This, what I just wrote here, is exactly what is right is this side right here. It's the exact same thing. And uh, this is all equal to a squared. So when I put that in my calculator and I hit enter it gives me gives me nothing. Oh, you know why? I know why. Let's put that back into a pointer. Now let's see if it. Got that. And I get 6.14. So when I go here, that means that the a squared is equal to 6.14. Now, at this point, you might be confused because 6.14 6 is larger than both of those sides, but I have to assume that if this angle is 30 degrees, I'm going to have an angle larger than that. But then I remember that here, it's the square root, so I have to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to take the square root on my calculator. So I'm going to take the square root. square root. I'm going to go back up and grab my answer and hit enter. And now I get my side to be 2.47. Rounded to the nearest tenth is 2.5. So my calculator gave me 2.47. But remember, you have to round your sides to the nearest tenth, so that's going to be 2.5. And now when I put that back in my calculator, my drawing, that makes more sense. So that side would be 2.5. And then if I wanted to find the rest of the triangle, I would just start with my I would start with my um, ratio and I would do the sine of 30 degrees over 2.5. In this case, I'm going to find the smallest angle, which is going to be C, the sine of C over 2. And I would do that. I'm not going to take the time because you know how to do that. So now what I want you to do is you've gone through a couple problems. You have a worksheet, a law of cosines worksheet. It's short. It has four problems. I want you, I gave it to you in class. I want you to work out those four problems. I put the answers online. So if you go to the blackboard here, I'll show you in a second. Okay, if you go to your blackboard, here's your blackboard, March 11th, Blended Learning. Um, this is going to look slightly different because I, I, I changed a little bit. But you will have this Law of Cosines worksheet. So, and I gave it to you in class. So you're going to have Patrick more Foreman, short problems. Room 239. Patrick to 239. You're going to have four short problems. I want you to work those problems out, doing them just like we did on the board. And then uh, if you go to the next thing, 
if you go to here, if you go to the next thing, it'll have the key. I want you to check your answers on the key to make sure you're doing them correctly. Uh, for some reason, it gave a cover page. Just scroll on down. And here's the four problems with the answers, and I worked it out. Here, this is just telling you that you're going to use and solve to do that. So pop that in your calculator and do and solve. After you're done doing that, you do have an assessment uh, quiz, whatever you want to call it, uh, which is this law of cosines assessment, uh, 10 questions. You are going to have to work those out on a separate piece of paper. You have 60 minutes, two attempts. Once you start, you may finish. If for some reason you don't remember the law of signs, I put an extra video here. Uh, and here on this formula, if you want to review that, it's all there for you. Any questions, please email me. Uh, any technical questions, call the school. Good luck and have a great day. Thanks.